All right, joining us live from the CME Group is Brian Tahako, senior trader at TNT Group in Chicago. He actively trades stocks, commodities, and currencies. And in Boston, Doug Cliggett, U.S. equity strategist at Credit Suisse. Doug is the most bearish of the 13 big brokerage strategists that we survey when it comes to the S&P 500 uh, and earnings targets. And Doug, why is that? I mean, we just got this uh, agreement. It looks like we could get a finalized agreement between the Democrats and Republicans on right. taxes. Uh, we see consumer spending kick up into the, in, into the holidays. Um, does 2011 not look rosier to you than 2010? I think 2011 is going to look a lot like 2010, Matt. I think we're, we're going to have some good weeks, some good months, and some tough weeks and months. Um, you know, if what was announced last night becomes law, I do think we'll be taking up our earnings estimate for 2011. Uh, what's a tougher call, though, is whether or not we want to take up our market target uh, because the, the things that are really going to accelerate growth in 2011, they're temporary. You know, the uh, full depreciation of equipment, that should pull capital spending forward into 2011. But it, it might be similar to cash for clunkers. We might just be, you know, pulling forward spending that may have happened otherwise. Hey, Doug. Um, hey. And so it's not clear we're going to put a higher multiple on these earnings. Doug, it's Dominic here. Is there anything that you can see that could kind of get you to up those earnings or, or, or rather kind of targets for the S&P 500? Is there anything out there that would? Because you are, in fact, one of the, like Matt said, the, the most bearish, I guess, if you want to put it that way, on the street right now. Well, I, I, I think, Dominic, what, what we would see is being very, very constructive is if the administration and Congress would embrace the deficit reduction plan that the commission reported. Um, because it, it seems to us what we really, really need to see is a sustainable growth trend. And to have a sustainable growth trend, we think it can't be relying on uh, increase in government borrowing every year. See, I look at these interday charts on, on the markets today, and they just come dropping down at the end of the day. I mean, what happened to, to, to pull the steam out of this rally? You know, it's just it's it's a basic fundamental process of things that look good aren't really good. You know, it's the same thing with this tax cut. That's all the rally was, but it's just it's pumped up inflation. It just pumped up prices, and basically, as as when it's all said and done, they're just going to pull the rug out on it. You're still not creating any type of growth. You're not creating any type of jobs. It's just all smoke and mirrors right now. And the market takes that into into effect. They they value it in, and then they pull the rug on it, and they they're going to keep doing this day in and day out. Hey, you know what? You guys are talking about, you know, the tax cut. It keeps creeping into our conversation. If you do look at it intraday, as Matt pointed out, it really shows a much clearer picture. When Obama was talking about kind of the back and forth over the tax cut issues, uh, we definitely did see the market go out of steam. Let's pull in a little bit of sound from that press conference the president held uh, earlier today. I think it's tempting not to negotiate with hostage takers uh, unless the hostage gets harmed. Then uh, people will... Uh, question the wisdom of that strategy. In this case, the hostage was the American people, and I was not willing to see them get harmed. All right, so that was a big issue. And again, if you look at an intraday chart of the S&P, everybody, that's when the S&P really kind of lost its rally momentum, and that's when we saw it move to its lows of the session. Doug, does it make sense for investors to be reacting that way when the president was talking about those tax issues and some other issues and kind of the back and forth right now, or lack thereof, if you will, in Congress? I, I think, Carol, you know, when we look at the equity market, it, it seems to me what equity investors really want is a belief in a long-term growth trend. And if what we continue to do is, you know, borrow hundreds of billions of dollars to, in turn, feed into the system to sustain growth, um, that, that's not something that an equity investor can really have confidence in for any meaningful period of time. That's why I think the PE multiple on earnings keeps edging down. There, there's just a, a, a lack of faith in the sustainability of it. So I think what we really need is, is a long-term plan. And, you know, part of that long-term plan probably should be something like reducing payroll taxes so that we're lowering the cost of labor. But then you've got to come up with an offset to it, either spending cuts or maybe a consumption tax. You need something to give faith that it's sustainable because we just can't keep borrowing an extra $100 billion or $200 billion to find a compromise every year. 
You know, and Adam, you've been looking into the impact of tax cuts on investors and corporate profits because it's certainly an important factor. Well, I've, I've got a, a th this is what we call the money chart, all right? This is one of these charts that it really kind of sets everything up. And, and Doug, I really want to want to throw this one over to you because yeah. obviously you're, you're one of the bears out there. This is corporate profits. It's tracked by the Bureau of Economic Statistics quarterly. You go back to 96. You see, we came up, we traded. I mean, corporate profits are actually back to where they were before 1.6 trillion back to where they were before the recession. So you could argue that what's being done with the, the tax compromise is actually putting some octane onto this whole thing. And if in fact we're already there and you send it higher, you're actually creating more profits in theory. Wouldn't that argue for being more bullish the market? Well, I, I think, as I said before, if this plan goes through, we will absolutely be raising our estimate of corporate profits in 2011. The, the problem is sort of that V-shaped recovery in profits that you're showing. Um, you know, the improvement we've seen in profit margins in the last seven quarters, in the prior cycle, it took four and a half years for that to happen. The reason I think it happened so fast this time is because we increased the federal budget deficit by $500 billion in the past two years. And that essentially, a, a lot of that increased government borrowing has flown into corporate profits. At some point, we're going to have to start bringing that government borrowing down. And that's why it's really hard to figure out how much of this amazing profit recovery is real and how much of it is going to fade when we put the federal budget on a more sustainable footing. Hey, Brian, I want to bring you back in this conversation here. One thing, speaking of government borrowing, one thing that we did see was Treasury yields go up, meaning bond prices went down, and they went up to the tune of 0.2%, which is staggering on an intraday basis for a 10-year bond. What, what did that tell us? I mean, this, this signaled it way before any of these moves in the stock market at the end of the day, right? Yeah, I mean, they, they kind of went first. They set the tone all day, but it was really hard because in the middle of the day, you had these tax cut talks. You had equities going higher and debt going lower. So people kind of felt like people were shifting out of debt into the stock market. But then the stock market got hit a little bit and the debt continued to go lower. Now, you had a three-year note auction that came out worse than expected, which kind of put more pressure on the shorter end. But on a big, big picture, I mean, we're looking at these treasuries. They're just bad. We don't see any real demand for them. People that already have have them, have them, and the people that have them, most of them don't really want them anymore. So I think you're just, you're really into a bad market right now with the treasuries. We don't like them at all. We're staying away from them and we're trying to be short them. Hey, all right, so they didn't like that. One thing investors liked today was uh, certainly shares of Citigroup. We did get some news. Hey, uh, Zara, let's bring you back into this. That stock was up almost 4% on the day. Okay, cool. Hi, guys. I um, just want to get to Citigroup just for a second here. And I'm sorry that I was just talking to some traders just about Citigroup right now. I think we had 561, thereabouts, million shares of Citigroup actually changing hands today. Just to give you a sense of the overall volume on the floor, 1.6 billion shares. So you're talking about a third, a quarter to a third of the overall volume that you got here on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Obviously, some of that had to do with the government getting out of city. The traders down here love to hear about the government getting out of private businesses and also because there was a rebalancing, a reweighting overall as well, which is why a crowd had been over here. It kind of still crowded, but not really anymore. But there was this big crowd as well. There was also this huge imbalance with um, buyers and sellers at the end of the close, which is why the stock actually traded or did not close on time, I should say. Also want to point out, you guys, the fact that Citigroup, the government getting out of Citigroup actually lends itself to this idea that it's a very favorable environment for stocks which is why the government decided this is a good time to sell right now. And that's why you're seeing a number of IPOs also coming to market this week as traders, again, and investors try to take advantage of a favorable environment for stocks. So have a couple of Chinese IPOs out tomorrow, guys. All right, Zara, thanks so much. Hey, Brian, last thoughts. I think Zara makes a good point in that we do want to see the government getting out of uh, private enterprise. I mean, that's a good move. Shouldn't that be some, somewhat supportive of also the overall market environment, just quickly? I mean, it is in the fact that, you know, the stuff has turned around a little bit, but it doesn't really show still any signs of growth. I mean, that's what we look at. We're looking for growth. We're looking for, you know, uh, employment. We're looking for stuff like that. Just because the government's selling out of some stock, it's still a scary point of why do they own the stock in the first place. All right, guys, got to leave it there. Brian Tahako and Doug Cliggett. Guys, thank you so much for walking us through the close.